All right, following on from the previous lecture on 2D plotting, you might have noticed that what we do most often isn't actually making a plot. We'll go df.head or tail or sample or just df itself and out spits panda an HTML table. We can actually do things with those tables. All right, I've thrown in my imports here, so let's create a data frame that we can work with. We're just gonna make one out of random data, just for fun, and we're gonna go numpy.random.normal this time for a normally distributed number, and we're just going to ask for a good old six by six uh, bit of data, and you know what, columns, we're gonna be inventive again, and I'm just gonna go x for x in a, b, c, d, e, f, that's it. All right, df, cool. We have a data frame ready to roll. For starters, what if we're working, let's say in finance, and we want all the negative numbers to be shown simply in red. Can we do that? Of course. First, we're gonna come down here and define a function called neg red, and it's gonna take as input x. And then we're just gonna return, and then this string here, so uh, I'll return an f string, uh, which is color, colon, and we're essentially doing CSS styles right now, and we'll go red if x is less than zero, else white, because white's what we've currently set. All right, we'll finish that off, and uh, oh, if anyone's not familiar with f-strings, the way it works is within the curly braces, it evaluates this in Python and just returns whatever that gives. So this would evaluate to color red if, uh, you know, x is less than zero or not. So we can come down here, having got this function, and we can go df, dot style dot apply map and this is a map because we're taking in these values essentially uh, one at a time and we'll go neg red fantastic right so we've applied this map it has passed our data through this function and modified the html style based upon the result of said function so we can do more than just apply map here we can work on the whole thing in one go Let's have a, you know, let's highlight the maximum value in gold. So we can go def gold max, we'll pass in x's. Notice I'm trying to keep it all clear. And we'll just go m, uh, this is our maxes, is equal to x's dot to numpy. And we're doing that so that when we call max, we get the max value out of all of it. So the 2D max. If we didn't cast this to numpy, pandas max, remember that does max per column. We want the max out of everything. Then we're gonna come down here and go color, is equal to, uh, let's see, um, bear with me as I type this out. So down here, I'm defining is max, which is simply checking to see if anything in X is equal to the maximum value. And I'm then going to replace this with color. So this here is going to give us a Boolean array. Uh, that is a bunch of true or falses. And then by using replace in dictionary mode, it says for every true, replace it with this background color and for every false, replace it with just an empty string. So this will now give us a very nice CSS format, one for each cell in the table. I will then return is max and do the same thing as we did before, df.style.apply. Notice it's apply, not apply map. And we'll go gold underscore max and we'll just pass in axis equals none. And this means that it covers both rows and columns, otherwise x's would be getting either a row at a time or a column at a time. We want everything at once. So you can see down here, we have successfully put the background color to gold for the value that has max. Let's just change this to show you what happens. If you go, for example, zero, we're saying, hey, now for every column, put the background max. So X is in here is now column by column. Axis one, you can see we're now doing it row by row. So the largest value in each row gets a gold background. Axis none, the largest value anywhere gets the gold background. Now we've written custom functions here, but you don't actually have to do that. If you want simplistic styling, well, that's easy. We can still go df.style and we can go background underscore gradient. And you know what? I'm gonna pick in here for the color map uh, make that magma for nice dramatic style and boom. What you can see right there is that the background colors have been changed according to uh, the value in the cell. So the higher the value, the more close to, uh, you know, the bright white yellow that represents the end of the color map. And black is obviously the far left hand version for the smallest slash most negative numbers. The other thing that we can do is essentially turn this into a bar plot. If I just get df.abs, just to start with, what we can do is we can go dot style dot bar, and then just go align equals left 
And then I'm just going to say the width of the bar plot is 90% of the cell. This is by default 100. Uh, and you can see doing this gets us a nice little representation for the value in the cell as to how big the bar plot is. The reason I put it to 90 rather than 100 is because otherwise you get this effect here where they all run into each other. And uh, that's obviously what it's doing here is it's doing it column by column. Right? Otherwise, if you go width 100, you wouldn't expect all of these different values to have, you know, the same width. So we'll go 90 here. Easy. All right, let's make this example a little bit more complex. And to do that, I'm going to copy and paste some code in. Otherwise, you'll have to sit and watch me type it out in 20 times speed. So what we've got here, this I'll explain in just a tick. But what I'm doing is I'm going to say df.style set table styles. I'm going to pass in all the styles I want the table to be set at in this head value here. This is going to be a little bit complex. And then I'm going to call bar just like we did before. But notice I haven't done absolute. So I'm going to align the bars in the middle of the columns, set the color to green and red separately, well, red and green, and then set the vmin and vmax ranges. If I run this, it's easy to see what's happening. I'm saying make the bar plot if it goes right as in a positive value green. And if it goes left, a negative value, make it red. All of this stuff up here is simply to make sure that the column header A, B, C, D, and F is aligned over the middle of the column. If I got rid of this, you'd see that it's a little bit harder to see what's going on because, you know, unless I, sorry, on my screen, it's still easy to see. But if this is compacted together on a smaller screen, it's confusing to see exactly whether A corresponds to this column or that column or, for example, you know, C here is actually over here. So it's easier for me just to set the column text align center for the header labels. Don't worry too much about those small details. The, the thing to take away from here is that you can customize these bar plots to do a bunch of useful things. Now let's be painful and do everything at once. So we can come down here and go df.style.bar and we can just like, just like we did just then, align the bar to the midpoint but set it to only cover 50% of the column. And then we can apply our gold max, just like we did before, and specify axis none, just like normal. And then also apply map and red underscore neg. So this is everything we've done right now. Apparently, um, I did I, did I, let me scroll up. Oh, neg red rather than red neg. Ah, there we go. This looks like trash. Agreed, but the point here is you can chain them all together. We successfully have negative numbers in red, we successfully have the bar plots, and we still have the gold background. Obviously, you wouldn't use this in a presentation, you'd make it look actually nice, but I'm not expecting you to use this in a presentation, so it's all good. So that's all I wanted to go through in this lecture, showing you how you can manipulate the HTML outputs to look different. And keep in mind that you can set these as default styles. So if you come up with, for example, if you're always working in finance data, you can tell pandas, hey, set everything to make sure that negative numbers always show in red. Just make that the default, then you never have to apply it again. You should be able to create your own version of the pandas styler class and implement what you want and then just have it picked up by pandas. Uh, doing that is probably beyond the scope of this course because you have to dig pretty deep down into pandas. But if it's something that you think is useful, then it's probably something that you might want to investigate. I generally don't bother too much because I'm not showing the output in my notebooks here to anyone else. So I don't need to have any particular styling. I just style things when or if I maybe want it, which is quite rare. I normally just make a plot. Alrighty, so with all this styling out of the way, let's jump back into the coding and the plots for the next lecture where we talk about n-dimensional distributions.